today on this edition on my channel I'm going to talk about shippers and receivers coming right up next in another premiere classic games of all time back in the day. If y'all remember that game, Parappa the Rapper, born in the 90s, me and my big bro Texan Maryland, when we were playing that game, and other games back then, classics. I like all the old school stuff. I'm an old school person. I don't really do too much new schooling, but teach is on. So I just thought I'd throw that in there as a little throwback. But, good day everyone. Happy day. Thank y'all for tuning in, as always. And so, before we get into today's topic about shippers and receivers, I want to again give thanks to all of my new friends who have donated to the Truckers Feeding the Homeless Foundation Organization Fund by the truckers on YouTube, the Stoop Gang, Choice Mass and them. Thank you all. Uh, let's keep let's keep it up. Their new goal is now to reach fifteen thousand from ten thousand. So they upped it up five thousand dollars more. So that's how serious they are. But yeah, thank you all who have already put it in their donations or are continuing to do so. And to those who are also going to lend a hand and help us out down in uh, Dallas this August. Again, those dates are August 22nd through the 24th. To those of you that said that they are coming down, Karen Price and Amanda Gidders, I think that's how you pronounce your last name, forgive me, but you all said that are coming down, have family members and friends that live in Dallas, but yes, are willing to lend a hand. Thank you all for that. So now on to the topic, shippers and receivers. This goes out to all the rookie drivers that are now in trucking. And let's just say they just got off the road with their mentors and they just upgraded to whatever company that they work for, Mega Carrier and all. You know, and just started doing loads as a company driver. I'm just speaking on a company driver's perspective. So. This is for all the company drivers who are just getting into trucking or uh, at a company and just starting out. So, trucking tips about shippers and receivers. So, you just got off the road with your mentor, right? He or she. And they gave you some pointers on how to deal with shippers and receivers, what to expect, you know, when you show up to these different warehouses to pick up loads and deliver loads to. I'm going to give you my perspective i'm not saying if their perspective is perfect or not i don't know how long they've been on the road or whatnot but they give their approach on it now i'm giving my approach so this is the best of my ability when i was out there on the road so first we start off with shipper so let's say you just upgraded let's say you just upgraded right into a company truck at the company headquarters you just passed the final road test and you know things of that nature and then you meet your driver meter slash leader you know in the office or not in person via the computer system or over the phone or what have you and then you get your first load you get your first load from your dispatcher or the load planner and it says pick up at <coughs> pick up at I'll give you an example so when I was at Navajo, you know, you get your first load, you, it gets picked up at National Beef in Liberal, Kansas. Don't ask me about the name of the, the town. It's just weird. They're, they're, trust me, when you're out there on the road, you go through different weird town names all across the country. But this is just an example. So they send you a message over the 
computer system, no matter what it is, Qualcomm, Blue Tree, whatever. National Beef. Pick up National Beef in Liberal, Kansas, and it gives you all the load information, the pickup number, PO number, bill laden number, and it says if it's preloaded or if it's a live load. When you go to meat patches, those will be preloaded trailers. Preloaded just means that you're taking it empty with you that the load planner has you go or your driver leader has you go pick up from the corporate office, from the yard or any of the yard terminals around there. Have you take that empty and deadhead to the pickup. Deadhead to National Beef there in Kansas. That's in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. So just so you know. And there's no signal service out there for your phone. I don't have signal service with Boost Android out there. But, <clears throat> yeah, so you take the empty trailer to National Beef, right? Now, how do you deal with when you check in at a shipping warehouse or a process plant? Well, it's pretty simple, simple, but then quite complicated because you're not the only one that's checking in. You're not the only one who's checking in. There's other drivers that are checked that they're being checked in uh, by the guard shack. You have guard shacks nine times out of ten at all of these different warehouses. So make sure you follow and read the signs when you go in there. And if you know if it's your first time, tell them it's your first time because that's what they're gonna ask you more than likely anyway when you walk into the guard shack. So. Like I said, know your signs, read the signs when you go in there. That's following directions. Make sure you have your safety vest. You get a safety vest when you go through orientation through whatever company you, you know, choose to work for. So if they require to have a safety vest, just like if the company you work for requires a safety vest on their property, wear the safety vest. But the best place to put the safety vest is wrap it around. Wrap it around the passenger seat. That's what I see all drivers do. So that it will, then that way you don't have to go in the back and get it. I used to always do that, but then I just I just figured well maybe I just wrap it around the passenger seat for quick easy access. But make sure you have that on when you go to a certain shipper that are required, you know, to have it on because it's part of their house rules. So and then when you have all the load information given to you. You want to have a notebook and some type of pen or pencil, something to write on on the notebook. So then that way you can have this information jotted down when you go check in. Because like I said before, there's other truck drivers that are waiting in line that are, that are trying to check in as well. So you don't want to last minute gather all information on the computer or call the company. And like I said, down there in Kansas, there's no signal service or to use the guard shack's phone for that information. You want to make sure... You want to make sure all the information is correct on the screen. You want to make sure all the information is correct on the screen when they give you the load information. Because most of the time it is, and then again, sometimes it isn't. So you want to verify with the dispatchers that you have all information. So when you check in, like I said, your pickup number, bill late number, and PO numbers are what the shipper needs or the guards at the guard shack need to um, find your load and wherever it's going. So if you're going from National Beef to Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, you know, for delivery, you know, you must have all the information on there for the pickup. So you, you bring an empty trailer to the meat patch and once you check in, also have your CDL on you. You know, of course, you're gonna automatically have your license on you in your wallet. Because you must show them that as verification of who you are and who they're dealing with. So you check in and then they're gonna tell you, again, ask you, is this your first time here? You tell them yes. Then after a while, when you've been there before plenty of times, then you will pretty much know your way around. But it being your first time there, these different shippers will have a map layout right there on the desk or counter inside the guard shack. And the guards will point y'all saying, okay, we're right here. Then where are you going to drop your empty trailer off at this washout bay? Uh, these particular meat plants, they have automatically the washout bay with their own accounts with the companies. 
So you don't have to worry about using a cash advance or what have you to get a washout. They automatically do the washout for you for free. All you do is just drop the trailer off uh, in their empty, dirty lot so that one of their yard trucks can go hook up and take it to the washout bay to get it washed out. So then now you're bio telling to go find your preloaded loaded trailer. Uh, the window for pickup could be three to four days is the maximum for the load to be ready in the deadline date or day, deadline date and time, which they go by military time, all the, the, the trucking companies in the trucking industry and with the hours of service. So let's say, just say nine times out of 10 that your load may not, well, let's just say may be ready. The load may be ready, all ready to go so that you don't have to sit and wait for hours at a time or whoever knows how long until it is ready during that window. So let's just say that the load is ready to all the rookie drivers out there. If your load is ready, they'll tell you, they'll give you the trailer information number, again, at the guard shack on what trailer it's loaded on to meet in the loaded section. Then you go to the loaded section, you hook up come back around so they can verify your seals. The seal numbers are these little plastic things like blue or different colors or red that are on the back of the trailer. And so you walk around with them, they break off the temporarily seal, temporary seals and let you open up the trailer doors to make sure the load is um, you know, in good shape or what have you loaded correctly. Oh, and not to mention, when you pick up the loaded trailer, they do have scale houses on site and you automatically have to go by house rules, scale out. Now, I'm not saying the load is, I mean, the scale is accurate because really it's, it's not that accurate most of the time. They'll say, oh, we fixed it, this, that, and third. But don't worry, if you feel that it's not accurate to you, there is a truck stop, thank goodness, since I was out there on the road in Navajo, that's nearby, down the street. There's a loves um, where they have a certified scale where you can scale as many times as you want to get the load right. But for the most part, my loads that I've had out of there have been underweight instead of overweight. So under 80,000 pounds. But, you know, you just never know, you know, when, when you go to shippers and how they load you or how they load the trailer up, you know, sitting there waiting for you because some shippers... They can, some some shippers cannot load trailers properly where they put the heavy stuff up front to make your truck heavy and then work their way light towards the back of the trailer. No, it's the other way around. You go light first, then heavy towards the back of the trailer so that your truck is not heavy because you don't want to be heavy on your truck axles, the drives, the steers and the drives. So, um, shippers... So that's pretty much everything with shippers. So when you check out, then you make sure you sign off. You sign off where you um, you sign off where you're you're taking the load and where it's going. Like I said, if it's going to Atlanta, it's going to Atlanta. And then then receivers. When you get to the receiver, you either have a drop and hook, or it'll be a live unload. With meat loads, it's with meat loads is a live unload. So, but drop and hook for some other type of commodity, drop and hook, basically, that just means that you're dropping the loaded trailer off and you're grabbing an empty. You're grabbing an empty trailer. So, afterwards, well, when you get to the receiver, you're telling them, yeah, whether it's a drop and hook or it's a live unload and for whatever date and time and window that, you know, that needs to be delivered. So, I'll talk to y'all in the next part because this is a longer video than I expected. So, stay tuned for part two. Alright, welcome back to the channel. So, back to what I was talking about, about receivers. So, you get to the receiver. Again, there's a guard check where you check in at, and if there's overnight parking nearby or what have you, you know, 
to make sure you're there on time and say, yeah, if you have a live unload or a drop and hook. So after, if it's a live unload, then they're going to give you an assigned dock door to go on. Assigned dock door, say door 12. They're going to call you and say go to door 12. Then you do your backing maneuvers to get out and looks and all of that. Uh, slide your tandems to the rear because it, the, all the, most of these shippers and receivers, yeah, they want you to slide tandems all the way to the back. And some people are just lazy about it, but it is what it is. So you do all of that back on the door and you get offloaded. If you're sitting there, most of the time you'd be sitting there for over an hour or so. Um, and that's where it, what's called detention pay, meaning that based on because of their um, negligence of not offloading you sooner or later, quicker than, than that, then you'll get extra pay on the hour. But that depends on what company you're with. So that's for live unloading. But like I said, dropping hook, you're just dropping it in, you're just dropping the load of trailer. And hooking up to an empty and then going on for your next so if you've already got a load by now most of the time like these mega carriers they'll already throw at you the dispatcher a load planner multiple load assignments or if you have additional stops with the current load that you're on you know additional stops to me you can have one two additional stops for delivery till you get to your to your uh to the receiver or what they call final or 90 or constant need or at the shipper, you could be picking up at three different places. And when I was at Navajo, I had, I think for the first time, three pickups in Washington State, August of last year during produce season. But normally it's the other way around for me where I would have additional stops for delivery, not additional stops for pickup. But it's not really more miles because you're still going in the same direction towards the final with those stops but it's just more weight on the load. So don't be discouraged when it says how much how much weight the load is and then when you scale the truck and trailer out what the total gross weight is on everything. So, and then last but not least, oh, the same still applies again to receive when you check in at the guard shack. If they require a safety vest, you know, you need your CDL, so you know, all that in your paperwork that you signed to take the load to the delivery point and then after they completed the load offloaded it or you dropping it and grabbing it and empty then the customer there will sign the rest saying that they received the freight and you know you're good to go so then go turn it in at the truck stop transflow and get paid for that particular week or the following week you know doing you know certain payrolls and stuff week in and week out weekly so and then last but not least, shippers and receivers, once again, be you follow all house rules and please be on your best, best behavior. Because if you cannot follow such certain rules that I've just given to you rookies out there, there are consequences behind that. Consequences behind that with them, you, and your company. And trust me, it has happened to me. It results in you being banned from ever going, coming back to a certain ship or a receiver, and so on and so forth. So I'll give you some examples. Again, when I was at Navajo Express, I had a pickup about two years ago in Northeast PA. That's Northeast PA. That's off I-90, just east of... No, west of Erie. But yeah, it's up there in in uh, Pennsylvania. I was sent there to pick up a preloaded trailer, checking at the guard shack. Uh, the guard asked me, you know, do I have my safety vest, my CDL, you know, my license and all that, and my pickup numbers and bill of lading numbers and all that to pick up this load. I said, yes, I do. I have all of that. So then he tells me, I, I told him it's my first time here. So... He says, where to go park? So I go park the truck. I go park the truck in so-and-so spot and go inside and check in at the shipping office. And I say to the lady, 
you know, check it in, picking up so and so, and they're telling me that where I parked the truck at is where I'm not supposed to park or wasn't supposed to park the truck that I was supposed to park the truck on the other side. So I said, okay, cool. So I parked the truck on the other side, you know, then pick up the load and then I'm, you know, good to go. But once I do all of that, how the way I, uh, they was like, well, you need to have your, you need to have your uh, safety vest, you need to have your safety vest visible. I said, what do you mean? My safety vest is visible. They're saying that they wanted it out, wearing, wearing over my jacket and not underneath my jacket because it was in the month of February when I went and it was cold. So they were just complaining about, yeah, it just needed to be over my jacket and not underneath where they could see it more. So I said, okay, and, you know, they had a problem with that, but that didn't lead me to getting thrown out. But when I left... I had an issue with that and I called my driver leader at the time. I said, next time do not send from now on, do not send me back to this place if we now do business with such and such. And I ended up having to go back there that same month or the month after and check in. I said, okay, yeah, I've been here before, yada, yada. So I know the rules. So now I had the vest on over my jacket. Like I said, it's, it's still winter time. So going to check in, I check in with a different la different lady at the shipping office, glass window, and I sign in, and I uh, I don't know what happened. So and so she said, or this, this the same thing that the other person said last time about me parking in the wrong area, and I said no, I'm parked where I was told to park before. I didn't park in the wrong area this time. And she said, no, you didn't do it this time. You didn't do it this time or whatever. And then I was like, all right, y'all, I'm not going through this again. I'm not going through this again with y'all. And then she literally left the window and said she wasn't going to put up with that. And I said, neither was I. So that's what led to me getting kicked out. It never can come back there. But I already told my, my job to say I wasn't going back there anymore, period. So... See, another example, when I was at Swift, my first company, there's a pickup place for paper in Zachary, Louisiana, just north of Baton Rouge. Uh, special comments in the blue tree says that when you go pick up from paper mill plants, that you have to have on pants, long sleeve shirts, what have you, everything covering up your skin, your body. Now, mind you, these are preloaded trailers. They're not live loads. You're not walking inside the warehouse where all this paper and stuff is stacked and whatnot is. I just think they're simple. I just think they're silly rules, but it is what it is. But I came, this was summertime in 2015. But I came pretty much just like this, shorts, short sleeve shirt and all that. I did have jeans and, you know, jackets and stuff, winter clothes in the truck. But... And you know, I was being told by the guard saying, yeah, we can't let you in because you have on summer clothes. You have to have, you have to be covered up and it'll go to the paper mill plant. So, like I said, that was my first time at the time getting my feet wet on learning about trucking and all that. And so, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I was pissed off about it and I threw a fit and, you know, next thing you know, I was, you know, called on by the sheriff's department and, you know, I was like, you know what, there's no need for all that. I would just leave, you know, and that's that. But I was told that, yeah, I was banned from that, that site and could never come back again. So I learned my life lesson on just in a nutshell, just to follow said instructions, the house rules when you come onto the property, even though you're not. An employee at their prop, but still, if you're a visitor, just like anyone else that checks in and might have a fit on such and such, just do it. I mean, there's, uh, there's drivers out there, even veteran drivers out there that have fits on, you know, not following the wretches or might be made fun of by, that's another thing. Then you can also deal with rude and nasty shippers and receivers. It's not always the driver's fault. It can be their fault, too. They can come at you wrong. It's not always the drivers coming at them wrong. 
So it goes both ways. They can come at the drivers wrong. But again, mind you that you know how many do you know how many drivers just for rookies out there that they check in daily? Like gazillion, gazillion drivers they check in daily. No matter whether it's the same people or different people in the trucking industry. But they deal with this on a daily grind. It just never stops. They run into different people every day. All colors and creeds and cultures. But the way I look at it is that no matter who who it is, I treat them how I would want to be treated. You know, not be treated a certain way, you know, with just no respect at all. So, but there's a lot of drivers out there that they do check in on a daily basis. And then again, when checking them on a daily basis, you know, it could be that they're jealous of the drivers, you know, because they're doing what they're supposed to be doing or not, and that they get paid more than what the guards make, you know, at the guard shack. But, you know, it's, it's actually, you know what, another example that just came to my head. On me uh, coming off the heels of uh, Navajo for my uh, rollover, December last year, I was at National Beef, uh, the location in Dodge City, Kansas, checking in with the guards and a particular security guard who I checked in with. He walks up to me and says, yeah, let's go outside and inspect the trailer, make sure the reefer unit works and things of that nature. As we're doing it, as we're stepping outside, the guy just intentionally steps on the back of my heels over there. I'm like, excuse me, sir, young guy. And I'll never forget, like, I, 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 re I made a report about that to my company, to Navajo. I said, I have never been embarrassed or mistreated like that in a while at a shipper or a receiver. But just be alert, rookies, when, you, when you're out there that if this ever happens to you, don't let it get to you, but hey, just I was told in this industry to speak in that industry to speak your mind, you know, about certain situations, sketchy or not. So, but those are all my tips on this topic, the shippers and receivers. So with that being said, from my channel to your channel. Salute. Thank y'all for watching. Let's go, baby. To the hole in the wall. I've had my time y'all yes i did in the hole in the wall mm -hmm. 